Hi, I am Pasquale Venuti and today I want to show you the accuracy we could get by means of fixed prostodontics on natural teeth. Sometimes I hear many clinicians then who topically they think they can get an amazing marginal fee and internal adaptation of their crowns and their bridges. And I often hear values around 20 micron, 30 micron. Today I will show you several studies conducted in dental literature in vitro just for showing you what happens even in the best conditions of in vitro studies in lab. And we are going to analyze what happens on 3 unit fixed dental bridges and on single crowns. This first paper is about the feet of cobalt chromium 3 unit dental bridges using different ways to treat chromium cobalt metals. In this study, they prep two abutments, one premolar and one molar. They took impression of these two abutments with silicon materials and they power the impression with gypsum. So they divided the gypsum models in three different groups with three different workflows. On every day they applied 50 micron of spacer except on the last 0.5 millimeter of the cervical part. Then on one third of them they produced chromium cobalt bridge with lost wax casting. So the traditional way with wax and casting procedure. The other third with milling procedure, they mill the blank of chromium cobaltum and the last third they produced the bridge in chromium cobaltum with laser sintering. Then they cemented the bridge onto the abutment and they sectioned it the abutment and the metal structure for analyzing the thickness of the cement internally. And they measured the thickness of the cement on 11 reference points in each section of the specimen, as you can see in the drawing. So these are the measure they get in every point for premolar and molar. But for better reading of this number, I will show you a synthesis of them. So the occlusal salmon thickness, it corresponds to the 5, 6, 7 points reference on the drawing. They produce 200 micron of thickness of cement in the lost wax casting. 225 micron of cement thickness occlusally in the millet chromium cobaltum group and 140 micron in the laser center in chromium cobaltum bridge. This is an average between premolar and molar.
the cement thickness at the margin, the marginal gap between the structure and the tooth structure, measure at the point 1 and 11. In last wax casting, was 120 micron. In millet group, was 220 micron. And in laser sintering group, was 90 micron. So, as you can understand, when you do a bridge in vitro, with all the ideal condition, a perfect drilling of the abutment, because there is no patient, there is no cheek, there is no tongue, there is a perfect vision, there is no stress. You can easily calculate the parallelism of the abutments. The impression is stress-proof, without any fluid, without any retraction of soft tissues, without any movements of the tray, even in those conditions in vitro. It's not easy in three-unit bridge to have an occlusal space less than 150 micron and a marginal fit less than 100 micron. Let's imagine what happens in a three unit bridge in vivo. Now let's see what happens when we analyze single crowns. Of course, it is an easier situation. Uh, we should expect a better adaptation of the crown. So let's analyze this paper from Ricciello, Amato, Leone, Sorrentino. They evaluated the marginal fit and the internal adaptation of single crowns in zirconia and lithium desilicate. Every step was carried out by an expert prosthodontist and in vitro condition, so in the best condition as possible, not by an general dentist, not by an young dentist, not by an unexperienced clinician, not in vivo on a patient, but in vitro by an expert prosthodontic on single crowns. They did the same procedure of the other paper. They drilled the batman. They took impression. They produced the zirconia crown, the lithium desilicate crowns. They cemented them and they, they sectioned them. And they calculated the thickness of the cement in different reference points. Let's see the results. These are all the numbers they collected, but let's do a synthesis of these numbers for a better reading. So the marginal salmon thickness was in average 72 micron. So the marginal gap, the marginal opening of the zirconia and leaden desilicate crown was in average 72 micron. And the occlusal salmon thickness was 100. 14 micron. So, from these two studies, you can easily infer that having a closely in vivo less than 200 micron with a bridge and 100 micron in single crown. It's not an easy goal, and having a marginal opening of the crown in bridge less than 100 micron is not an easy task, and less than 80, 100 micron in single crown is not an easy task. That's why we should reframe what we do in prosthetic dentistry. 
And we shouldn't understand when we work with bigger space. And we should understand well this concept, especially when we apply the spacer onto the abutment. Because applying not so much spacing and applying spacing in the wrong places can lead to increase the issues. Anyway, in the next video, we're going to talk extensively about the spacer problem, especially in vertical prep. I hope you enjoyed this little lecture.